Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have a new Back to Cake Basics episode for you and I'll be sharing with you my basic vanilla sponge cake recipe. Now you've probably seen me make this cake in quite a few of my other video recipes, but today I wanted to make a dedicated video to share with you guys all my tips and tricks for making the perfect sponge cake every single time. And sponge cakes are really unique and different for a couple different reasons, but the first thing you'll notice is they're really light and fluffy and voluminous, but they're a little bit more dry on the inside, and that's because they're made without any oil, butter, or grease. So they're made with just eggs, sugar, vanilla, flour, and baking powder. It's just five ingredients to make this simple cake. And uh, as I mentioned, they're a little bit more dry on the inside, but that actually makes them perfect for just about any type of frosting or filling, especially if you're going to be using fruits, fruit preserves, or jam, or even wine as a as flavor for the inside. Sponge cakes are really great because they'll absorb all that incredible flavor and still maintain their shape. So for this recipe today I'm going to be using uh, six eggs and this is perfect for two eight inch cake rounds or you can use this for a jelly roll pan if you want to make a cake roll. If you want to increase this recipe that's super super easy to do I'm going to leave all the instructions on my website. Meanwhile let's get started with this recipe. Into my mixer bowl, I'm going to place in six large eggs. Now these can be at room temperature or straight out of the refrigerator. I've tried it both ways and it doesn't make too big of a difference. So I'm gonna drop those right in. Add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can also use any type of other extract like a lemon or hazelnut or even almond. And one cup of white granulated sugar. And before beginning your recipe, I recommend washing the inside of your mixing bowl with a degreasing dish soap just to get rid of any trace amounts of grease that may have been left um, in the bowl from a previous recipe. So I'm going to whisk together the eggs, the sugar, and the vanilla for about seven to eight minutes on high speed uh, so until the eggs are really thick and fluffy, voluminous, and they should be pale white in color. So sponge cakes get all their volume from the eggs, so you need to get the eggs to the right consistency. Beating the eggs will also help get rid of any eggy flavor. So if you ever made a sponge cake and you can kind of still taste the eggs in it, try whisking the eggs for longer the next time. It's definitely going to help. And while my eggs are beating away, I'm going to prepare my dry ingredients. I have one cup of all-purpose flour to that. I'm going to add in one teaspoon of baking powder and just mix that in together so it's equally distributed. My eggs are all done. They're thick, pale, and voluminous. And now I'm ready to add in the dry ingredients. And this is also a crucial step in the recipe because if you deflate the eggs at this point, you might as well just throw out the batter um, because your cakes are just gonna be flat. So it's really important to add the ingredients gradually. I add this one cup of flour in three increments. I add just a little bit at a time. And you always, always wanna sift it into the batter. Don't just dump it in there sift it in and then grab a spatula and gently but thoroughly fold from the bottom of the mixing bowl. So I always just start from the top, just kind of bring it in because the flour likes to fall to the bottom of the bowl. You want to make sure that you get all of it incorporated. So gently but thoroughly, just fold it in there. You don't want to mix it in with a whisk. You don't want to use this. You don't want to do this step with your mixer. You always, always want to use your hands and a spatula and gently fold it in. And adding in the flour gradually takes a little bit more time than say just dumping it in there, but it's really important to add it gradually, otherwise it's just going to clump up, weigh down the eggs, and the cake is gonna go flat. And last bit of flour going in. And today I'll be using these two eight inch cake pans of, and I've lined the bottom with parchment paper and I'm leaving the sides ungreased. It's super, super important that you do not grease the sides, whether you're using round cake pans, sheet pan, or even a cupcake pan. Line the bottom with parchment paper, but do not grease the sides. I'm going to grab my spatula and divide the cake batter evenly between the two pans. And typically when I'm using only two cake pans, I don't use a kitchen scale to weigh out my batter. Now if I'm going to be using three or four cake pans, then I break out the kitchen scale just to make sure that every single layer has the same amount of batter. And you'll wanna grab a little offset spatula and level out the cake batter in the pans. Just 
very gently. And my sponge cake layers are ready to go into my preheated oven. I'm going to bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 22 minutes until they have a rich golden brown color on the top. Then I'll take them out and let them cool on a wire rack. Now, if you've ever made sponge cake before where your batter looks perfect and they should have turned out ideally, but then you take them out of the oven and they kind of fall flat, it's because you didn't bake them long enough. Try increasing the baking time by two, three, even four minutes until the sponge cakes have a really rich golden brown color on the top. And that means that the inside, the structure, the sponge itself is baked, set, and then it won't fall flat once you take it out of the oven. All right, my sponge cakes have been cooling for about 20 minutes now. And I wanted to mention one other thing that will help your sponge cakes remain level on the top. As soon as I took it out of the oven, I grabbed a knife and I ran it along the edge of the cake pan and it just releases the cake from the pan and as it cools, it'll stay more level on top as well. So now that it's slightly cooled, I'm going to flip it over, remove it from the pan and you can remove the parchment paper at this time as well. This looks so beautiful, such a perfect little sponge cake. And I wanted to show you guys what the sponge cake looks like on the inside. The first thing is you wanna let the cake cool completely. So if it's even a little bit warm, it's going to start to gum up on your knife. Grab a long serrated knife and then split it down the middle. I like to go around the cake first and um, cut about half an inch into the cake. Make sure that it's even all the way around and then you can start cutting further into the cake. and check that out. So many beautiful little air pockets. So as I mentioned before, sponge cakes are drier than like a regular cake than my basic vanilla cake or basic um, uh, chocolate cake. So this makes them perfect for jams, spreads, and fruit. And that's it guys for my basic vanilla sponge cake recipe. For the full recipe and for more tips, head on down into that video description box. I've left a link there that'll take you over to my website so you can print this recipe off and share it with your family and friends. And also on my website, I'm going to leave a list of all my favorite cake creations that include this particular sponge cake recipe so you guys have some recipe inspiration. And make sure to check out my entire Back to Cake Basics series. I have lots and lots of recipes in there, lots of cakes, frosting, whipped cream frostings and fillings so you guys could create your own cake recipe. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sponge cake at home. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time.